Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here playing some more Warhammer combat cards. It's been a little while since I uploaded my last video. Been a little bit busy and also kind of sick, not the greatest combo. But there is actually quite a bit of stuff to talk about here. Right now we're in the midst of an exploration campaign playing as Necrons against uh, four factions with uh, thematic decks. It's a pretty fun one, but uh, there have been a lot of similar campaigns like this in the past, specifically with Necrons at max level with 400 points. Uh, I will be playing a match a little bit later, but before that, I just want to show you what's in the shop. We do have the Silent King, who is now available for purchase. He's a 110-point Warlord. He's got Inspiring Presence and Regeneration, and his special rule allows all of your cards, whether they're dead or alive, uh, to ready at the end of your turn. And then uh, the Silent King himself, the first time he gets attacked, it summons this really big bodyguard with Taunt and a ranged attack. Uh, and these are his stats at max level. So uh, if you purchase this bundle, you can use him in the current campaign at max level, uh, which is pretty crazy. Also for the army box, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but you can get uh, Gilliman as well uh, with uh, Plasma. If you have 1,250 Plasma, uh, get a copy of him alongside some other bodyguards, which would be nice in a max level Space Marine event. We also have the new Apocalypse mode, which uh, you can look at here. It's uh, just next to ranked, but currently it's just a casual mode. It doesn't contribute to your Ascent to Terra, but this is the 400-point uh, deck mode with the cards in your collection. Uh, I haven't done so much of that yet, but uh, maybe in some future videos I could uh, take a look and see what this is like. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, play a match here. Uh, obviously, the best Warlord to be using for Necrons is Trazen, uh, and he's the one that I've used in the past. I've done numerous videos uh, with basically the same set of bodyguards. Uh, the legendaries, especially these two 34-point uh, legendary guys, are really good. And that's another video I do want to do at some point, is just showing you the power discrepancy between cards of similar cost. Just based on their traits and their rarity, uh, cards that cost the same can be wildly different in terms of power levels. Uh, but we'll save that for another time. Uh, in this video, I'm actually going to be using Imhotek the Stormlord uh, with his uh, snazzy new look. Uh, this guy is not really that amazing, and as the only legendary Necron Warlord, other than the Silent King, of course, uh, you would think that he would be quite strong at the max level, but I haven't really used him so much because uh, his special rule is just not really that great. Just deals 20 damage to a random enemy whenever you're ready, which is probably not going to be happening so often. He's got Inspiring Presence and Barrage for his traits, which are both, uh, you know, solid traits, but again, on the Warlord, it's not really super amazing. He does have almost 400 health, uh, which is pretty good. So I'm going to be running uh, some of those uh, powerful legendaries that I mentioned before. Uh, we're also running the Transcendent, which on paper it looks pretty good, but uh, it actually doesn't have a huge amount of health, which is why you need to heal it. And we are running two healers. Um, both of these guys actually got buffed this season. So we got Oricon the Diviner, got the new model there. Uh, very tanky for a 23-point card. But yeah, he's got the healing. And then we got Illuminor Zerus. So this guy is uh, just not very good. Um, but he did get a slight buff this season, so that's really the only reason I'm using him. And then we got the uh, Royal Warden, which uh, also got buffed significantly this season. So this one is actually pretty decent as well. And then we've got the Deceiver and the Nightbringer. I really hope they come out with new models for these two because they look very dated alongside some of the newer models here. But let's go ahead and deploy with this 395-point Necron deck, and we'll see what we're up against. Uh, I've been taking my time in this campaign. I'm only, well, less than halfway through, I think. But uh, coming up against some pretty crazy stuff... And again, it's, it's stuff that we've seen in the past. Um, whenever they do a 400-point uh, event with curated decks, uh, it's basically just the same things every time. Although, we have been getting an influx of many new cards uh, recently, so I guess they're maybe slightly different than before, uh, just um, based on uh, new cards that have entered the game. But we are up against Servants of the Emperor, led by Canoness Viridian, running 13 bodyguards. That is a lot of bodyguards. Uh, so yeah, this is going to take a little while to get through. Um, we are, well, I have it at max speed right now, but uh, four shields, that's right, Sisters of Battle. The Sororitas have uh, a whole lot of shields, which is, um, yeah, it's going to be lovely. Uh, we're going to drop Oricon the Diviner here. And uh, they have the initiative, so they'll be taking the first turn. I guess we'll, we'll just drop the Marshal of the Host, you know, the Royal Warden. Maybe make use of that Inspiring Presence. And uh, I'm going to be going ranged, which means that we will be able to see Oricon's, uh, or not, yeah, or the Imotex special rule go off when uh, Oricon readies, dealing a whopping 20 damage. Uh, not really that great against, uh, well, at, when everything's at the max level, but um, at least we'll be able to knock out some of the shields here with the barrage. 20 damage there. I slowed it down a little bit here, 
But you know what? I think I'm just going to have to speed it up again because, you know, this game is going to take a while. 13 bodyguards. Uh, yeah, so we'll just keep it at the uh, the max speed here. Ooh, getting an extra attack there. Uh, that was the Paragon War Suit. That's going to be taking down the Royal Warden pretty soon. And hopefully not before it gets a chance to attack. It's going to be pretty close here because, um, yeah, that barrage is going to take down uh, this healer over here. Tony, whoa, that's, that's the special rule did it, and the Royal Warden dies before it can attack. So pretty unfortunate there. Um, so I don't know, maybe we could actually ready for a turn, maybe. Uh, Oricon is actually not bad. Let's see, I think we might as well just drop like this guy here. With the Inspiring Presence, and uh, we'll just have like Inspiring Presence for most of this game, because Imhotek himself also has uh, Inspiring Presence as well. They're going ranged, so we get a really big barrage attack here off. Transcendent is actually doing quite nicely here. Uh, I was going to say, Regeneration is not really the greatest trait at max level, but um, when it's only taking small amounts of damage, it's actually pretty good. Uh, let's see how much we can do here. 482 with the melee. That's not bad, but I think we're just going to keep going ranged here for a little bit longer. Ooh, that was actually kind of cool. Imotex thing just uh, zapped that guy through, or zapped that lady, rather, through the shield. Uh, only one more shield left on the Overlord. Oh, no. Well, he's not going to be lasting uh, a huge amount of time. They're continuing to go ranged, which uh, I don't mind so much. Boom. Okay, uh, yeah, the uh, this one, the Retributor got the extra attack with the special rule, but it did zero damage because she has zero melee attack. Sucks to be them. All right, they've got Taunt on the field, though. And we're just going to keep going ranged. Wow, we're, we're actually seeing... I'm seeing more of a Imotex special rule here than, like, I've ever seen. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, that Retributor is going to get to fire back for 72 damage. Max level Taunt really reduces the damage by a massive amount. Oricon finally goes down. And, yep. Ooh, wow, lots of stuff happening here. Boom. Uh, Ken, or not Ken, what, what her name is, Celestine getting, like, two attacks in there. That's pretty painful. Uh, we have Illuminor Zerus. I think we're going to drop him over here. Get some more healing on these guys. I want the Overlord alive for just a little bit longer, so. This is actually going to go pretty nicely, because they're dropping these uh, weak cards here that uh, are not going to be doing a whole lot. But I guess Celestine is going to be getting some extra attacks in here, most likely. There's the Death Blow. Celestine redeploys zero damage there with that extra attack. <laughs> These uh, Sisters of Battle, a lot of them do not combo well with uh, Ken Ness Viridian at all. But Celestine, yeah, getting like three attacks in there, it looks like. Lots of damage. Oh, this is a fairly new one. The Triumph of St. Catherine, four shields and inspiring presence, and another four shields with that sister in the center. They're going melee. It's quite a bit of damage there. It's a good thing I, I had the Transcendent. This guy is doing a lot of work with the uh, the barrage here. So let's go ahead and... What do we want to do? I mean, we could switch over to melee. Yeah, we could we could give it a shot. So yeah, Scout actually also combos with Imotech special rules. So when he readies, it's going to trigger that 20 damage, which goes into the center. All right, we got a 105 boost to the melee. So yeah, I, I say we go for it. It's going to be a lot of damage, but um, hopefully it's not the... Yep, no, oh, it is this Triumph of St. Catherine getting uh, three attacks in there. Nearly enough to kill the Overlord, but not quite. He just barely hangs on. Two more bodyguards to get through. This is taking a while, but uh, going decently... Well, there's some... They've got some firepower on board now. And that, yeah, that barrage is going to knock out the Overlord. Transcendent survives, but it's going to be very close. Uh, if they get an extra attack in, they could kill the thing, which I do not want happening. Uh, let's see, it is 75%. It's going to be quite close, actually. We'll go ahead and drop the Nightbringer. Oh, wait, the Nightbringer is going to kill that uh, thing, I think. I was thinking it was going to hit the shield, but no. Okay, fortunately, the Transcendent survives, which is actually really good, because now we can take out Junith in the center. Which means the Transcendent, man. Deploy it on turn one, and it has outlived 12 bodyguards. 12 enemy bodyguards. That is insane. And now the Warlord is on the field, and she is going to finally kill that Transcendent. It goes down. Uh, I think it's time to bring out the big guy, Imotech. Let's do some damage here. 
Haven't seen this guy on the field in what feels like years. So, uh, when buffed by Inspiring Presence, he does 156 Barrage with his ranged attack, and then 66 melee. Not too shabby. Go ahead and make use of that ranged attack here. Hopefully blast through the shields a little bit. Just 28 damage pierces through. And, uh, yeah, Kenneth gets a couple attacks in there, but... Fortunately, the bodyguards for uh, Sisters of Battle are just not really that amazing. So, it wasn't too difficult. Let's see, she has one shield left, so we should be able to finish the game. Well, we'll just keep going ranged, because it looks cooler. Boom. All right, and there it is. Victory for the Necrons with Emotech the Stormlord. But I would not really recommend using him, honestly. Like, his special role just is not that great. We did see it go off quite a few times there. And there's an error. Been having a number of games, that, like, uh, disconnecting recently, which is kind of annoying. Uh, okay, there we go. But yeah, uh, if you have Trazen in your collection, I would definitely recommend using him. The ability to just straight up steal three of your the, the enemy's strongest bodyguards is incredibly powerful. Especially at the max level. Uh, though it can be a little bit tricky to use. I do hope that they rework some of the Warlord special rules, though. Like, particularly the Corpse Lord. I was just thinking, like, an easy fix would just to make it, like, percentage-based. That would make this so much better, while also not making it too overpowered for lower-level players. Uh, another thing that would be interesting is if, like, the, uh, the special rule actually scaled with the level of the Warlord. Like, if... The more you upgrade it, the more damage it does, which would be pretty cool, but kind of hard to work into the current uh, upgrade system. But yeah, let me know how it's going for you. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.